Are you the type of armor modeler who just builds stuff out of the box, but you would like to improve your models with as little effort as possible? Or are you all about detailing the shit out of your builds and you've been wondering, like, where do I start? Well then, let me introduce you to one of the most basic construction techniques known to armor modelers. Adding armor texture and flame cut marks. What's up guys, how are you doing today? These two techniques are one of the easiest out there and you can use them to drastically improve the appearance of your armor models even if you're just building a simple kit straight out of the box. Your models are gonna look more metal and other modelers will notice that extra effort. And if you like to compete, it will increase your chance of getting that shiny medal on a model show. Before we start, there are a few things worth mentioning. Some higher quality kits come with molded armor textures, but it might be too faint for your taste or you can actually destroy some of it if you have to sand something, for example. Speaking of sanding, it's also important to fill and sand any unwanted gaps on the main kit part before you start applying the texture. And if you plan on making your own weld seams, you should rescribe the armor plates beforehand as well, but that's a topic for another video. Ok, so let's see what we'll need. Some people like to use Mr. Surfacer 500 to texture their models. The results are great, but it's easy to dissolve this thing with glue or debonder, so I don't use it that often, but we'll definitely take a look at it at some point on this channel. What I prefer is Tamiya Putty. Make sure it's the basic type, or simply the grey one. And I like to mix it with Mr. Cement S from Mr. Hobby. To me, extra thin works great as well, but this one dries a lot more faster. I'm using this metal cap from a pickle jar to mix it. A ghetto solution of sorts, but it gets the job done. And you also need a selection of old frail brushes to apply the texture. Big ones for large surfaces, and small ones for precise application, obviously. So for starters, let's add small amount of putty into the cap and put some cement on top of it. Then you just have to mix them together until you get this somewhere in between consistency. The first layer is there to partially melt the plastic, so you can be pretty heavy handed with it. And before we get any further, it's very important to decide where you should apply the texture. Current fashion is to add it to the thickest plates on the tank, so mostly the front, side and sometimes rear plates. Top plates were usually very thin and that, due to manufacturing processes which I don't quite understand, resulted in a smoother finish. This creates a nice contrast between the individual panels and makes the model more interesting and detailed. The other important thing is to not mistake this effect for cast steel texture. That one has a specific appearance because the manufacturing process is completely different. I'll make a tutorial about that as well as soon as I build a model with cast thread or something. So back to the topic. This layer of stippled putty is there to both melt and damage the plastic of the kit, which will create some fine recessed imperfections and to also add some raised texture. That's why we're using diluted putty and not just glue. I'd also like to point out that you should try to work as clean as possible, so don't apply the putty anywhere else. Of course, a few dabs here and there are okay if you can easily remove them, but we'll get to that later in this video. The intensity of the texture is also completely up to you, and it's good to use reference photos if you can. If there are no detailed photos or you're building a fictional tank, just use your common sense. If you wanted a light texture, this layer would be enough, but let's take it a little bit further. Now we'll mix much thicker putty. Again, I don't know how to describe it, so just take a look and you'll get the idea. This mixture should be applied only in a few places and it will create heavier spots of raised texture. It will be drying quite fast on your brush, so you'll need to mix it with cement over and over again. Because this step creates quite heavy texture, it's again important to decide where you want to apply it, or if you need to apply it, like, at all. On this particular model I decided to apply it only on the thickest plates, so the front, glazes, sides and the entire turret. Huh, now that I said it, it will be easier to say where I didn't apply it, aka the back plate. And if this step looks quite gnarly, that's because it is. But there are several ways to refine it later. Like with most techniques, some back and forth action is always necessary. So for the final layer we'll mix a very thin mixture, almost like a glue with a few drops of putty. It should be thin enough to run freely like a liquid. 
and this layer is there to unify the previous two. You're basically gonna just tidy things up and tie them together, which is especially helpful if the texture you created is quite messy. Which usually is, if you're hitting that surface hard enough. If you encounter any small details on the surface, you have two options. You can remove them and scratch build new ones if they are bad, or if that's not the case, take a small brush and carefully apply the texture around them. You must be very careful and take your time, because it's hard to remove the putty without damaging them and trust me, small bolts don't look good with armor texture on top of them. That's just a sign of lazy modeling. Ok, now that the texture had a few minutes to dry, it's time to sand it down. I like to use this micro fine sanding sponge, but any kind of fine sandpaper should be ok. And by fine, I mean like 2 or 3 thousand grit. It's important to apply very little pressure on the surface. You're not trying to remove the texture, you're just leveling it, aka making it smoother and level, just like a real roll steel plate. If you added too much texture, now it's time to actually do the opposite and put more pressure on the sandpaper and remove some of the excess putty. A very common mistake I see often is that modelers add too heavy texture, which looks like rough Soviet casting or like a block of concrete. So take your time here and make sure to smoothen it out. Sanding will create a lot of dust. You can use an old toothbrush to clean the surface or if there's too much, it's actually not a bad idea to just put the model in a sink and clean it with some soapy water. Then it's time to clean the excess putty that you happily slapped where it doesn't belong. I think scraping it from grooves where weld seams will go is not that important, but since it can affect the shape and depth of the groove, I like to do it anyway. Plus the model looks more professional when everything is nice and tidy. Also the nearby areas such as the... how should I call it? The armor thickness, the parts that show you how thick the plate is. These also get messy and since we'll be creating flame cuts there, it's important to clean them too. And the same rule about clean and professional looking applies here as well. Small accidents like this can happen during the cleanup. You can easily remove unwanted scrapes with small amount of diluted putty. Now that we have the model fully textured and cleaned up, we can take a hobby knife and I'd actually recommend against using a new blade, because you'll break the tip anyway, so use an older blade, but it has to be still sharp, like this one for example, and we can start carving in the flame cuts. These should be perpendicular... perpendicular... perpendicular to the edge of the plate and just like with the armor texture, their intensity depends on the subject. Some armor plates have their edges machined, so they actually look pretty neat, but others can have visible gouges in them. Excellent example of this are Soviet tanks built during the war. The type of plastic has a big impact on the result, and this particular kit is made from strange brittle styrene I've never seen before. So the result won't be what I'm used to, but it's still gonna be interesting. You probably noticed that I scraped the ridges in, then turned the model around and repeat the same thing. That's because you should keep the blade slightly angled to get a more natural looking result, and because I want some of them to be deeper and wider, I'm repeating the process from the opposite side. It's also a good idea to slightly scrape away the excess plastic burrs, otherwise the result will be quite brutal and we don't want that. Except if you're building an IS-2, then you should definitely leave them there. It's important to be careful during this process. First, you can easily cut yourself. I usually cut myself each time, but nothing serious. And second, it's easy to damage the surrounding parts with your blade. And although this technique is very easy, it takes some time, so you have to be patient. Adding texture and flame cuts to this model took me about 4 evenings, which is a time other modelers would need to build the entire model, but it would look a lot less interesting than this, eh? Uh. So when you're done it's once again time to grab some liquid cement and brush it over the cut marks. This will melt the plastic and soften the effect, creating a realistic finish. I used to believe the only suitable cement for this was to me extra thin because it melts plastic real good, but Mr. Cement S works just fine and it doesn't take forever to dry. It actually evaporates right in front of your eyes, so you can work faster. How much glue you add, or actually how many passes you make over the parts, will determine the final result. The more you melt the plastic, the softer the result. So you have multiple ways to adjust the effect and get the result you're after. 
It just takes a tiny bit of practice to get used to it. And all of a sudden you get a much more interesting model. Congratulations! You don't have to be a rocket scientist to get this right, they're both super easy techniques, you can use them in 1 16th, 1 35th, 1 48th, 1 72nd. I even did it once on a 100th scale tank, and the most important thing, it's fun and it improves your model like so much. And once again, it doesn't matter if you're building out of the box or you're super detailing your favorite tank, you can use these techniques on any armor model. Because if you look close enough, no tank is smooth. Okay, maybe except a Challenger or Abrams, but I'm sure even those have some rough spots. Anyway, thank you all for watching and let me know in the comments if you like texturing your models as well and if you have some of your own techniques. Thanks again mates and I'll see you in the next one. It actually, eva it actually evaporates right in front of your eyes. <clears throat> It actually evaporates right in front of your eye. Uh, it actually, re it, it actually, ev <laughs> it actually evaporates right in front of your eyes. <laughs> it actually, <clears throat> it actually evaporates right in front of your eyes. Front, <laughs> it actually, it actually evaporates right in front of your front, right in front of your eyes. <laughs>